A pleasant good evening to all and greetings in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And it is a privilege to be here tonight and to, to be able to share from the Word of God with you. Our topic tonight is the Great White Throne Judgment. The Great White Throne Judgment. So several things that we want to say concerning that. So this is our base scripture that we're going to be using, Revelation 20, 11 to 15. And this is what it says. It says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So this is our base scripture that gives us the teaching about the great white throne judgment. These are just a, just a couple uh, images. All right, other terms. Oftentimes, you will hear people speaking about judgment day. We say that judgment day will come. That judgment day that they are talking about, that's not a movie. That judgment day is this great white throne judgment. It may also be referred to as the last judgment because it is the last judgment for man. After this, there will be no more judgment for man. No judge will even be needed after the great white throne judgment. So just a little note here. The great white throne judgment is not the judgment seat of Christ or the bema seat of Christ. Reverend Cindy would have addressed that last week. These are two separate events. So today we are speaking about the white throne judgment. All right, so we're going to look at several things concerning the great white throne judgment. So I'm putting it under a broad heading, the nature of the great white throne judgment. And I'm going to be looking at several little aspects inside of that. So who will be there? Let's talk about who will be there. Who will be there? The great white throne judgment is not for believers. This judgment is for unbelievers. Or if we can, we can categorize that, those who have died without having a real saving relationship with Jesus Christ. We are talking about the spiritual dead. When we look at our base scripture, we see that their bodies are going to be summoned from the grave and the sea. Now, you know, Pastor Vader had given, given an illustration of time. If, a, if all kind of difference with a fish and eat you up and party here and party there, what's going to happen? Well, the Bible tells us that the, the, the grave and the sea were called to deliver up the dead. So you're going to be pieced back together. The bodies were summoned from the grave and the sea, and the souls are called out from death and hell. And why? To stand judgment before God. This group who will be there, this group will be made up, as the scripture tells us, of the great and the small. It's going to be made up of all classes of people, people from every kindred and tribe and nation, every creed, every race. It will also be a multi-religious group as well. And I don't want to call out any religions, but this group that are standing before the great white throne awaiting judgment will be made up of many religious groups and denominational denominations. Those who believed in many gods will be in this group. Unfortunately, those who believed in one God, some of those would be in that group. And they will be grouped together with those who refuse to believe in any God at all. They will be forming this group who will be judged. Those who believe in meditation, those who believe in salvation through doing works, they will also be in that group. So those are who will be there. Generally, we can make a general statement. That group is made up of unbelievers. And why will they be there? They are at the judgment because they believed in their chosen truth, but not in the truth of Jesus Christ. So let me say that. People choose the truth that they want to believe. Not because you choose a truth to believe in means that that is the truth. The scripture tells us that in John 14, 6, Jesus said, 
unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If anybody choose to believe anything other than that, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, then that person cannot go to the Father because the criteria for going to the Father is believing in Jesus Christ. This judgment, why will they be, why will they be there? This judgment is because they have rejected Jesus Christ as their substitute. Remember that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. He is our perfect substitute, the perfect Lamb of God. And because they have rejected Christ as their substitute, it means that they would have chosen to pay the penalty for their own sins themselves. They reject the substitute. They, they reject the offering that God made for us. And they have chosen, they have said, in effect, that I will pay for my own sins. And now this time has come. And because God is a just, holy, and righteous God, all sin requires that a penalty must be paid for it. And they are at this judgment to pay the penalty for their own sin because they have rejected the substitute. For those who would have received Christ for the believers, the penalty for, for their sin and our sin is placed upon Christ. But for those who reject Christ, they have to carry in themselves the penalty for this sin. And this penalty is very extreme and very, very severe. And brethren, let me say this. We must be sure of what we believe. We must be sure in whom we believe. What will happen when they stand before God? So these unbelievers are standing before God. Well, let's answer that straight out of Scripture. Matthew 7, 21 to 23, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. This time, this white throne judgment is going to be a very grievous time. I want you to notice in those scriptures the word many in verse 22. Many people will be facing this judgment. Notice the word prophesied which is a high gifting. And notice wonderful works because that would also have been done. And uh, I want you to know that motives and agendas are always open before God. Man cannot see a motive. Man cannot see an agenda, but God sees your motive and your agenda. And all actions and sins will be judged. You notice that Jesus does not put up an argument to them. Jesus does not contest the fact that they did great things. There is no contesting of that. But what is being accounted for here is their being. Yes, they were doing, but were they being the person that God called them to be? And the person in whom they believed, did they align themselves properly? Was the direction of their belief pointing to the right person or did they believe in themselves or did they believe in Jesus and or Jesus together with that's a serious issue right there but their belief and their being were called into account and now as they stand before God the criteria for judgment is that they are judged against the standard of God's holiness which we could never match up to they are judged against the standard of God's righteousness and we know our righteousness is as filthy rags and they are judged against the truth of God's words. Remember that heaven and earth will pass away. Not one jot or tittle of God's word will ever fail. We'll be judged against the word. Okay, so when and where will the great white throne judgment be held? When and where will it be held? And our scripture for that, Revelation 20, 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. The great white throne judgment will take place at the end of the millennial reign, or the 1,000 year reign of Christ on the earth. After that 1,000 years has expired, certain things are going to happen, and then the great white throne judgment takes place. That's the when. 
the exact location where the exact location is not clear and revelation 2011 that's on our screen gives us a very interesting phrase here it says from whose face the earth and heaven fled away the earth and the heaven fled away now what does that mean it means that it cannot take place on earth because at the appearance of god the earth will have fled away but also it cannot take place in heaven because sinners are going to be judged and no sinner can enter into the presence of god in heaven so it cannot take place on earth it cannot take place in heaven because they will have fled away so we are not sure where it's going to take place it can take place somewhere between heaven and earth you don't know we don't know god may have it on another planet we cannot limit god or or, or box god in as to what he's going to do but we know from the scripture that the earth would have fled away heaven would have fled away and sinners cannot enter into heaven so it's going to take place somewhere that we are not sure about but we do know that it will take place what we do know is that it takes place before the throne of god and i want you to think about that because the throne is so oftentimes described as such a place of beauty a place of majesty and mercy and grace we long to enter before the throne of grace we long to get a prayer before the throne of god but in judgment at this great white throne judgment it's the same throne there are not two thrones it's the same throne this throne here is a throne of sheer terror and of consequence so that's who that's when and where it will be held who is the judge it's a judgment who is going to be the judge who is the judge of the great white throne judgment let's look at three words here great great speaks of being sovereign and infinite white speaks of divine purity holiness and justice and throne speaks about the majesty of the one who is qualified to judge jesus christ is the judge on the throne when reverend cindy shared he was the judge on the judgment seat of christ giving out rewards to the, to the living believers those who were raptured and those who are raised now incorruptible and went to receive their awards jesus was the judge before the judgment seat of christ and he's also going to be the judge of the unbelieving spiritually dead at the white throne judgment these scriptures will tell us that john 5 22 for the father judgeth no man but had committed all judgment unto the son john 5 27 continuing in that trend and had given jesus had given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of god and romans 2 16 in the day when god shall judge the secrets of men by jesus christ according to my gospel so jesus is going to be the judge on the throne and jesus is well qualified to be the judge he is perfectly qualified to be the judge since he has done all that he could to redeem fallen humanity jesus did everything that he could have done he left heaven he came to earth he took on the form of man he walked he was clothed in the flesh he lived just as we live he was subject to all passions just as we are he lived without sin he was crucified he was dead he was buried he was raised again he has ascended into heaven he has issued the invitation he is our he's our advocate he's our high priest every single thing that he could have done to provide redemption for fallen humanity he has done and so if any man chooses to reject his offer of salvation then they will stand before him and they will be judged by him he's well qualified to judge let's talk about the judgment revelation 2012 it says and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open excuse me like, and another book was open which is the book of life <clears throat> and the dead were judged out of those things were, which were written in the books according to their works I want us to understand something about the judgment on this day there will be no trial on that day on the great white throne judgment on that day grace and mercy will neither be present nor available we can make no appeal 
there will not be any defenses put forward. There is no time to speak. There is no petitioning. There is no pleading. No defense will be put forth on that day. It will be a great and terrible day as a verdict will be delivered. No trial, just verdict, just sentencing, just pronouncement. And it's not going to be rewards. It is punishment. It's going to be severe. It's going to be extreme. It's going to be three things. It's going to be just. It's going to be fair. And it's going to be irreversible. The penalties that will be laid out. Uh, our scripture tells us that. Uh, Revelation 20, 15 gives us another scripture. And it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So both of these scriptures are telling us uh, about books being read from. This tells us about two books being opened. There are two books. One is referred to as the book of life. And then there is another book, it's not named, but in it are recorded all of the works. And I'd like to refer to that book as the book of reward, recorded works. So there is a book of life and there is a book of recorded works. So how does this work? We cannot be exactly sure. I'd like to imagine it like this, that at birth, our names are entered into the book of life. So there is a book. God has a registry, just like we have a, a register of births in, in our country and in every country. God has a book and he will register every birth. In that book, maybe next to that book, God might put a date which our age of accountability might expire. So if you are born on the 1st of November, let's say 1974, then if God is going to allow you up to five years for your age of accountability, then in 1980, then your age of accountability will have expired. Therefore, you are no longer covered under the age of uh, accountability. Now, between that time and the time you die, you have the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And if you do not accept Jesus Christ in your lifetime, then your name will be blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 3, 5, think about that. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot his name out of the book of life. So that there is the potential for names to be blotted out of the book of life. And if our names are blotted out of the book of life, if within our given, if within our allotted time on earth, we did not accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we did not become saved, we were not born again, then our name will be blotted out of the book of life. And if our names are blotted out of the book of life, then we cannot enter into heaven. If our names are not in the book of life, then we'll have to stand, try, we'll have to stand at the great white throne judgment. Their names and deeds will be read out of the other book, the book which contained their works. And guess what? The judge, Jesus Christ, at that time will apply divine justice. In other words, the penalty, the penalty and the punishment will match the degree of every offense that was committed. God is a righteous judge. Everything that was deserved will be applied. Will there be different degrees of penalty? I believe so. Luke 12, 47 and 48 tells us about that, that, that he that knew the will and chose not to do it will be beaten many with many stripes. And he that uh, did not know the will but are worthy of punishment will be beaten with few stripes and unto whom much was given, much will be expected. I believe that there will be different degrees of penalties, uh, but we know that God is fair. And uh, so in divine justice, the penalty will match the degree of the offenses. And that's what the great white throne judgment is about. So having said that in a few minutes, how do we escape judgment? Well, death and hell and the contents thereof will be cast into the lake of fire. We saw that in our base scripture. We said this is the final judgment of man. Understand this church. 
the purpose of this judgment and of this sentence is not to rehabilitate the sinner. God is not rehabilitating sinners and giving people a chance here. It is to serve divine judgment and retribution for sin. Notice that, and it is worthy to note that the first doctrine to ever be denied was the doctrine of judgment. When the serpent put forward to Eve that you shall not surely die. God had said, the day you eat of that, you will surely die. That's judgment. And the first doctrine to be denied was the one of judgment, that you shall not surely die. But even though this does not sound like God, look at what happened to Adam and Eve and the fall of man. That judgment was real. And this judgment of the great white throne judgment will be real as well. It sounds harsh. It doesn't sound merciful. But God is merciful. But the other side of that is God is just. And all sin will be punished. The only way to escape this judgment is to have your name written in the Lamb's book of life. You must be saved, brethren. You must be born again if you want to see the kingdom of God. Understand today with all of the teachings that we have been doing, understand what lies ahead of us. The rapture of the church lies at our doorstep. It is right there. We are on borrowed time right now. The close of this church age is drawing in. And what lies after that is judgment. And I remember Reverend Camille talking about the seals and the trumpets and the bowls. And we are talking about the white throne judgment. Everything that comes after is going to be judgment. It's going to be a difficult time. So if you haven't accepted Christ as yet, do so with urgency and with seriousness because time is surely run, running out. The scripture is very clear. One day we will all stand before God. Whether it will be at the beamer seat of Jesus Christ as a believer receiving rewards or whether it will be as, a, as an unbeliever, the great white throne judgment standing for sentences is up to us and the decisions we make while we are yet in the land of the living. Because for all of us, brethren, my final statement, you will either face him as your Lord and Savior, or we will face him as our judge. We have to determine. We have to make up our minds.